like a money in the bank ladder match. Not necessarily, <laughs> not necessarily like, you know, money in the bank exactly, but something where I have to climb a ladder and win something. <laughs> okay. So I, like I take it you're not afraid of heights then. <laughs> oh, I'm terrified. The one and only Jordan Grace to the stream. Hi guys. What's up? I was just dancing along to the intro video. Oh, Same. we always we do. dance like every time. Every time. <laughs> I was it's like, like, wow, this is, this is hot. This is hot. Yeah, right? <laughs> it gets us like really hype. So yeah. like we always feel really good. Like it doesn't matter what kind of day we're having. That song comes on and it's we're true. like doing the flim flam dance and we're terrible at it. I felt but... it. I felt it. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here, Jordan. Um, before we started, I just wanted to like say one thing. Um, so we've gotten the chance to share a locker room together at Shine uh, a couple times. And I wanted to say that you were always someone that stood out to me as being so kind. And in this business, you don't always, you know, come across the nicest people. And I really wanted to say thank you for always being really nice to me in environments where, you know, not everyone's always nice. Well. <laughs> Uh, you're welcome, but I, I definitely feel like that's the bare minimum that we could do. But <laughs> I guess, yeah, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> you're awesome. And I feel like, you know, I feel like everybody should be nice to everyone. There's no reason to be mean or have any kind of ego. So I know it's wrestling. I know it's it's not always like that, but I wish it was. Yeah, same here, same here. But thank you. It, it's always stood out to me, and and thank you. I'm glad I got to like verbally say it to you. Thank you. That's nice. <laughs> well, I'm I'm glad to finally have the pleasure to meet you because I have not met you in person yet. So this is a huge honor, and it is so cool for me. So hello. <laughs> Hi. Nice to virtually meet you too. <laughs> Yay! Uh, so the first thing that we wanted to mention is congrats on being a newlywed. Thank you very much. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Ooh, sparkle, sparkle. <laughs> Thank you. It's, yes, we've been together, uh, what, married four months now. <laughs> nice. Congratulations. Yeah. And Danica, you've been married how long now? Oh, January. four months. Three and, a, and yeah. some change. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, how is yeah. it? Do you, do you love it? It's all the same and it's great. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Everybody always asks me, how's being married? I'm like, it's literally, it feels the exact same. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like yeah. we just hit Heather just uh, passed the you just hit the two year mark. Yeah, our, our two years. I mean, like, I feel like it's just uh, I wear more sweatpants now. Like, maybe that's like I mean, the big difference. Like, there's not. Really I mean, I difference. would I would say that I agree with that, except that since this year was, you know, the, all the COVID stuff, I've been wearing a lot of sweatpants. So, yeah, yeah. kind of happened is, before the wedding. My, uh, my go to outfits right now are jumpsuits. Jumpers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah. They yeah, are dude. amazing. I love them. <laughs> they feel so comfortable. Like you don't have to wear anything underneath them. And they kind of yes. they look cute and kind of fancy. So I feel like I feel good going out of the house and all. Heck yeah. That's nice. I uh not gonna lie, I wear sweatpants that are uh they have an emblem and a saying from my favorite podcast, which is my favorite murder, and it just says, Fuck you, I'm married. I wear these out of the house all the time I'm and I'm not upset about that. it. <laughs> right? right. Isn't that brilliant? <laughs> but yeah, so what, what can you tell us about the day and, you know, how COVID changed your plans? Because I know for, for those of us that were looking forward to having like the wedding this year that we all just went, well, shit. <laughs> yeah. So we were actually supposed to get married in, uh, in March and we had flown down and our wedding was supposed to be the week afterwards. And then I don't, I don't know if you guys remember when like, the everything started but the weekend before our wedding they had started shutting down the borders and that that was like we were like oh this is like for real for real and then we started thinking like okay so they're shutting down the borders are they gonna start like canceling domestic flights as well they didn't but we were nervous that they were so we ended up just canceling the wedding even though we were already in in texas for it and we had to fly home and then like oh, man i was devastated obviously but yeah. <laughs> With, yeah, we, um, right to be. Yeah. 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 yeah it was it yeah, was terrible. Like sucks. everything was already bought. Like I had like a thousand dollars worth of flowers that we actually ended up uh doing something nice, I guess, and taking them to um some of the doctors at a hospital so they didn't go to waste. Oh, so awesome. I'm glad that we did that, but I was still like crying while I Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, no, we of course. <laughs> yeah. And, All of um, the emotions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just like dang, this really sucks. And then we, we rescheduled for September because we were like, okay, maybe things will have quieted down a little bit. 
<laughs> that was very naive, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so what we actually ended up doing was we did, we still did it in September, but we like, we barely had anybody there. It was an outdoor wedding. And I mean, it obviously wasn't like my dream wedding. So maybe we can have, have a do over when everything gets back to normal, but that's just how it is. That's, that's our plan too. Yeah. We had our moms at a theater that we rented <laughs> And uh, we were just like, we'll just do the thing. And then eventually we'll have a party, you know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, I'm sure it was so magical for both of y'all. And the party can come later, you know? Like, yeah. we'll a party once everything's back to normal. But, like, it's interesting that you said, like, you felt naive. I, I think none of us assumed it would be going on this long. Mm -hmm. I, like, because Danica's is supposed to be in October. Yeah. And mine, I is, mine is currently scheduled for May. And we're still going, I don't know if we're going to do that. Uh, it's just everything is still up in the air. Mm -hmm. This it's just kind of crazy because yeah, we don't we have the vaccine now, but we don't know. Like I mean, obviously people are not going to get it because they're people, mm -hmm. and <laughs> it's just it's, yeah, it's taking so people. long. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> Well, I mean, I know it, it'll at least it, it'll give us something to celebrate once everything's back on track and things will be back on track. That's the thing that we have to like keep reminding ourselves. This is temporary and things are going to be wonderful and it's just a matter of timing. So we shall see. Fingers it, and toes crossed. <laughs> it's been a rough year. Oh, and also another thing that happened was uh, we had, we had pre-planned our honeymoon last year and we had paid like, you know, $4,000 for it. And it was through like a, it was a smaller company that we had planned it through like a, a tourism company. And for about, s until like two months ago, they weren't messaging me back. So I thought I had lost that $4,000 too. But a couple months ago, they finally responded and were like, you know, sorry, COVID, blah, 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 you know, the normal stuff. And they you are- can write an email. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. right? So they were like, they were telling me finally that they're gonna either refund us by May or book our trip, so. Okay, Good. man. <laughs> so where where do you plan to go once you can? We were going to do um, a 420 honeymoon in Colorado. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, so it was like it was like That's a rad. whole thing. It was like a week of just like um, they teach. There's like a sushi and joint rolling class. What? So, <laughs> I mean, like I a, love that I, so much. That is so <laughs> smart to put this like, together. So smart. That's we so had like smart. so much stuff. <laughs> Planned. Like there was a cooking class we were going to, like how to infuse, you know, marijuana into stuff, just like all kinds of different stuff. Oh my God. I, I want to do that. a sushi and joy rolling class. Right? Damn. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I wanted to go. do it really bad too. <laughs> uh. I don't even eat sushi, but I'm gonna. <laughs> After the joint part, I'm going to be eating. <laughs> right. Oh, I'm so excited. We'll okay. get you there. <laughs> I am interested. Sign me up. Okay. So uh, one of the other things that we kind of wanted to mention, Jordan, was that, um, you know, I really appreciate the things that you put on your social media. I feel like that you do a lot for women in general. And I like that you're, you know, Danica and I are the same way. You know, I think people expect us to always be on. We're always supposed to look like, you know, we have our hair done, we have our makeup done. Oh, we should be wearing, you know, fancy dresses, whatever. We're not that person 24 seven, you know? <laughs> so um, I, I just kind of also wanted to say thank you for showing that women don't necessarily have to be on fleek 24 seven to be beautiful. You We're know, not. like we can- None of us yeah. fucking are. <laughs> no. Yeah. And it's just really hard with like, you know, everything on Instagram that you always see, like everybody's like always on point. And you see there's these filters nowadays where you can actually like hold the camera up to your face and it puts makeup on your face while you take a picture of yourself. Uh, I've so, done it. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm not gonna say it, but I have. Yeah. I've done it too, but I do feel like it, it really sets like unrealistic standards. And yeah. I started really noticing it more when I have a little sister who's 14 and she started like, I guess developing um, like anxiety about her appearance and how she looks. And I had to tell her like, look, these people don't really look like this. I don't really look like this all the time. This is makeup and a filter. Like I used Facetune. Like I just, that really got to me when she was like, why, why do you look so perfect all the time? And I look like this. I'm like, this is not, that's not what I look like. I look like it's, I promise. It's all a lie. <laughs> so wow. that just really got to me and it made me want to just I guess show show more of uh, the real stuff. Yeah, I mean, because why not be real? Mm -hmm. I mean, it just, ah, it's such a 
crazy stigma, but yes, I, th thank you for, for doing that. That's what we want. A thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. That, there is still quite a few things that I put filters on, but I'm trying not to. I'm doing my best. It's like, you know, it's a recovery process. Oh, absolutely. I mean, guilty, you know, like I think we've all done it, but I, you know, I think COVID has definitely like showed me too, you know, there's was weeks, months when like I didn't brush my hair or like put makeup on. And I was like, like, I'm kind of okay with this. Like, I don't want to be high maintenance. I, I like, I felt just as beautiful, you know, without all of it. So I just think that, you know, I'm still working on being more comfortable with it, but you know, like you said, it's a process. It's it's definitely a process. It's, it's very difficult. And I, I don't think it's ever going to get easier, to be honest. I think it's always going to be hard. Fair. Um, but I reiterate sweatpants. <laughs> Glorious. <laughs> not, I'm not upset about it. So um, on top of that, we also wanted to to thank you for helping to, to try to get rid of that stigma about intergender wrestling. And, you know, that, you know, sexists out there will say that it's not believable because they're sexist. But um, <laughs> obviously you've proven otherwise. Yeah, I just I, think... I, you they never want I, I take right? issue with it. Yeah. They um, so sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to ask, like, how do you how do we keep pushing to make it more acceptable the way that it needs to be? Oh, we just we gotta keep doing the same exact thing that we're doing now. Like, there is always gonna be people, no matter what, that's gonna be against it. But I think we just gotta keep having amazing intergender matches. And I think I've even seen like people saying online, like, okay, I saw this match and it changed my mind about intergender wrestling. I just think we got to keep pushing forward and keep progressing. Like, like that's all we have to do. That's all we can do. What's all we can do. Right. Mm -hmm. All these people that say, Oh, it reminds me of domestic violence. It just makes me think like, do you think that there's that you think that gay couples don't experience domestic violence? Like, <laughs> so yeah, that's all we got to keep, do keep doing is keep pushing forward. Keep and doing what we're doing. Stay consistent in the fight. Mm -hmm. Amen. I love it. Well, okay, since since we're kind of talking about things being different in the, in this this crazy crazy world, what has it been like wrestling and filming during this pandemic? Honestly, I kind of love it and I kind of hate it. So, <laughs> at Impact, we we obviously don't have a crowd right now and um we haven't been really doing anything live besides the pay-per-views. I think we've had two live pay-per-views. And so in the past year, I've only wrestled live one time on a pay-per-view, but at the tapings, we can stop whenever we want. So <laughs> that's pretty, that's pretty awesome. To be honest, it makes you feel, it makes you feel like more like an actor, mm -hmm. I guess, cause you can like kind of yell like cut, <laughs> let, me, <laughs> let me redo this and make it look better. So I think, uh, you know, people have been, have been saying like, oh, your matches have been so good at impact this last year. I promise it's only because <laughs> like, I get to redo spots over again. <laughs> <laughs> fair fair enough and so, what, what how do you feel about not having a crowd like do you feel like you you like feeding off of that energy or do you think it's you know you don't necessarily need a crowd in order to have a fantastic match i don't think you need to have a, a crowd in order to have a fantastic match but i feel like it adds to it immensely like i don't think there's 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 nothing there's nothing there's not a re not ever going to be a replacement for having people there reacting to certain spots and you really don't know how things are coming across to anybody because there's no one there reacting to it. So like I said, it's, it's definitely a love hate relationship with not having the fans there. And then, you know, it's kind of weird because I feel like impact is like one of the only bigger companies right now who doesn't have fans. WWE, I feel like they do have fans because they have like the whole, you Thunder know, they're, Dome. Yeah, yeah they're, they're super mm -hmm. rich. They're super rich company thing going on. And then AEW <laughs> actually has fans there. So, yeah, I feel like uh, it's going to be a big change once I finally go back in front of a live crowd. It's right. Gonna it's going to be a rush. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Hopefully, so hopefully I'm not in the middle of a match and I'm just like, oh, can we, can we, <laughs> Never. Can we start <laughs> What is she doing? What's happening here? <laughs> Fair oh, enough. Man. So Danica. on that note, kind of, you've, you've wrestled all over the world. And of course, I'm sure you've already been able to participate in a lot of what you would consider a dream match. But is there an opponent you're still hoping to share the ring with? 
So actually, I was just on a Tommy Dreamer's podcast right before this, and he asked. Oh me my god! Thing. How funny! Oh, great minds think alike. <laughs> <Let's> <laughs> uh... But um, I told him, I told him Beth Phoenix. I think if she oh, ever, yeah. you know, had the urge that that would be awesome. She's someone that I, you know, looked up to when I was a kid and was my favorite women's wrestler when I was younger. So that's a match that I would really love to have. I think that could happen. I feel like she's not done, right? And especially, yeah. you know, Edge is back in it. I don't know. I feel like, oh, I, I'd love to see that. <laughs> you know, I agree I with love you, her too. but I, I think that she, if she does something else, it's going to be with WWE. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if we'll ever be able to, like, do it together. I feel like she's going to end up, like, wrestling in WWE for like like Mickey James does right now. I mm -hmm. feel like she'll have some kind of run like that because I mean she's obviously super famous and I don't think any company that I'm gonna work for anytime soon is gonna be able to pay, pay her what WWE can. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Listen, you're right. You never know. <laughs> we're optimists here. So okay. And kind of like to piggyback off of that, is there a pay-per-view that you look forward to as a wrestler but also as a fan man is there one honestly i never watch pay-per-views live i only watch them um like what do you call it like i watch them as they come on like twitter or i watch like the update stuff so if someone's like live tweeting it i always see like the highlights but you know what i really do love is if a, if a pay-per-view has a cinematic match on it those have become some of my, my favorite matches. I think they're just like extremely entertaining. I really mm -hmm. want to be in one that's like, they're so much fun to me. There's just like, they, they defy reality. <laughs> I feel like that's another thing that's come out of COVID too. You know, we've all had to like pivot and try new things. And we've been given these like incredible, like cinematic. Okay, do you have a favorite cinematic match that that's come out so far? Oh man, um, what was it? Was it was it the Undertaker who who had one recently with AJ? Yeah, yeah. at Mania. Just, yeah, just like <laughs> like what is happening? It's just like it was just incredible. There, you know, we were just talking about how you can't please everyone, and everybody's always gonna hate something. I feel like those are awesome, but there's always people that are gonna be like, "Oh, this is not real wrestling." Blah 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 blah. But I feel like it's real wrestling. I feel like it's awesome. Real. It's entertaining. It's <laughs> so freaking cool yeah if you don't like it like don't watch it yeah. like we're not forcing your eyes to stay open and watch the screen yeah exactly. anyway don't watch it then <laughs> <sighs> this, this might i'm trying to see if i can word this in a way that's that's gonna not kind of double ask this i guess but um is there a type of match on your bucket list that you've not done that you want to participate in well besides a cinematic match yeah. that i just talked about yeah Oh, man, I'm trying to think about if there's one. I really, I mean, I don't like weapons that much, but I'd love to have like a like a Money in the Bank ladder match. <laughs> Not necessarily like, you know, Money in the Bank exactly, but something where I have to climb a ladder and win something. <laughs> Okay, so I, like I take it you're not afraid of heights then. <laughs> oh, I'm terrified. I feel like that's the thrill. Like I'd be like, oh, this is yeah, let's go. <laughs> Danica, I feel like we've yet to interview a wrestler that has not said that they're yeah that they like height. Like every wrestler that we've interviewed so far is terrified of heights. Height. Is this the common thing? But, but they also agree, yes, let's sure. do the money in the bank one. <laughs> <I can't. laughs> talking about and like th the thing that like blows my mind is like even standing in a ring like for me at least like i always had to wear like flat shoes because wearing heels i was like wobbling around <laughs> i don't see how you could put a ladder and then climb up of like a ladder as it's wobbling it's terrible jordan that's why you do it not danica and i because we're scared <laughs> well i'm it's also the, completely it's the adrenaline guys the adrenaline really gets you <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Oh, okay. So another thing that we wanted to mention that we think is so cool is you now have a micro brawler in your likeness. Do you have her? <laughs> Look how this cute is the last it is. one. I have to give it to my mom. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, you do. Yes, you do. So can you tell us about like when you found out about your micro brawler and like what was it like getting to see her for the first time? So Impact did not tell me that this was going to happen. I found out on Twitter. And I was like, <laughs> what the heck? Like, <laughs> that's like so cool. And then I actually, 
I actually had to sign a hundred of them. And I have a picture of like a hundred just like laid out across three tables. And I was like, this is so dope. Like, (laughs) (laughs) this is so random and cool. So I told my mom and she was just like, this is like surreal almost that you have like an action figure. This is like, it makes you immortal as they say. Yeah. What what a monumental moment. Yeah. That like, and that's something you're going to have forever. But you know what is funny though? Um, I only have one wrist tape on. Do you see? And the other. Oh, yes. <laughs> what? Don't pretend like you got the first one on, and before you put the second one on, they're like Jordan, Jordan, and then you're <laughs> like, oh, hi, hi, and then like, yeah. Interesting. I talked to someone, and they were like, yeah, this can be the special variant, and then when you have more made with the other wrist tape on, these will be like rare. Oh, the yeah, rare there ones. You go. Mm-hmm. Collector's edition. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. Mm-hmm. All right. So another very cool thing what we wanted to mention is that you're a published author because of your <laughs> amazing. And I mean, this is just, it's just <laughs> such a cool idea because of how horrific it is. <laughs> but, you know, what gave you the idea to actually go ahead and compile books worth of creepy DMs? And is there one DM that stands above the rest as maybe the most surprising? Man, I can't, I cannot, there's no way I can pick just one, first of all. <laughs> like, Which is because awful, but. <laughs> still to this day, I just get message after message after message. I'm just like, what is this? Like, yesterday. Content. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But I really, I really want to write, I really want to put another one together. It's just like having the mindset to get all these, screenshot them and do it all over again. Um, but I will, I will tell you about one that I got yesterday. I got, um. A man sent me a picture of his penis in a chastity belt. In a chastity, you know what those things are? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Where they lock your uh huh wow. your wiener and your and your balls together. And yes, it was, it was a picture of him with his legs together from the back. Oh, and he said, "How glorious!" <laughs> he said, "Please let me be your slave, Miss Jordan." And I was just like, "What is happening?" <laughs> oh Lord. Okay. So I- that one stands out. A lot, <laughs> as it should. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. What? That is so what? Like, what kind of mentality do you have I, to have? I don't think that you're just I will like, ever understand click. why somebody is like, you know what? This is a good thing for me to do. Mm-hmm. This seems right. It was just very How aggressive. appropriate of me. <laughs> I, wow. I don't. I can't. I can't even think about what people what goes to these people's minds anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, I've gotten some that I find, like, mine are more surprising who they come from. You know, like, Mm -hmm. I've never aired it out because, like, I'm not here to ruin marriages. But, like, some of the ones that I get, I'm just like, really? Like, why? Like, I I don't get how they get off, like, doing that. The thrill of it, you know? like If someone has their wife or like their family in their photo, I will 100% screenshot it and send it to their wife. Like, I don't think that's acceptable at all. I would want someone to tell me. Yeah, yeah, I am all for that. (laughs) Well, like, I'm a a complete stalker. And like, I'll be like, I'll find your wife. Like, don't play. (laughs) I love that. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> I'm, I might gain a little confidence and we'll see. I mean, it's been a minute. I, they, they've they settled down, um, but okay. The next one that comes through. I was going to say, don't worry. Another one will come. They always okay. <laughs> I can't <laughs> wait. There's plenty of creepos in the world. Don't Yay. worry. <laughs> oh, love it. And, and like, you know, Danik and I also, um, you know, like we're in the convention world. So, you know, we... God, I don't, I'm not here. Oh, Lord. I don't want to like call out anybody, but there's been a Power Ranger or two that's been in. I'm like, go, go, Power Ranger. Like, we don't, like, get out of here. Away. Go, go. What is happening? I don't know. I don't know. But some of them I do get a good laugh from. So I guess there's that. There's Social there's media that. really gives people the audacity. Like, yeah. It's just too much power. Yeah, It's too yeah. much power, especially for men. They already have power, and now they're like, mm-hmm. I'm just going to take a little too bit much. more. Yeah, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> um, okay, so <laughs> not to completely get away from that subject, but um, let's do it. Yeah, okay, let's. <laughs> What would you say is the best piece of advice that somebody had given to you when you were starting your wrestling career? 
Oh man. When I first started wrestling, when I first started wrestling, someone had told me to uh, keep your, keep your ears open and your mouth closed. <laughs> And I think that was, that was good advice for like the first few years of my career, because a lot of people, when they first get into wrestling, they, they think they know everything because it's really easy to like get a, get an ego really quick when you start wrestling. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but especially for, for girls, sometimes they just like that happens. And I just listened to everybody and took in as much information as I can. And I think I came out better for it. Fair enough. Um, okay, so here's a question from the crowd. Night Dog wants to know, and I hope that I can ask this, um, will you have a crossover match on AEW? That's their question, not mine. I <laughs> This question has been asked to me about a million times. I, here's a million and one, Jordan. Here it is. Listen, I have no idea, guys. I genuinely have no idea. Uh, I'm, I'll, I'm waiting on the call, pretty much. Like, that's all I can say about it. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Like, it, it's it's all political at this point, right? Fair. Okay. That is fair. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, there you go. If not, is there someone in AEW that you would like to face? Of course. I would love I would love to let wrestle literally any of their girls. I want to wrestle Sheeta. I've never wrestled her before, but she's can I cuss? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course. But, sorry, I'm pretty sure I already have, but yeah, it's fucking awesome. I have. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. Me and me and Britt have talked about wrestling each other again. So I'd love to wrestle her again. I ha it's been like five years since we wrestled. Penelope, just like literally any of their girls. I'm I'm friends with most of the women on the roster. So any of their girls would be awesome to wrestle. All right. Yeah. Heck cool. yeah. I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you have any pre-match rituals? And uh, what is the strangest pre-match ritual you've seen? Because, you know, we, we hear about things like wearing the same socks all the time or, you know, the wrist tape and stuff like that. But do you have any? And have you seen any really weird ones? I've been trying to get a pre-match ritual. Like, I legitimately have been like, I want I want to have one because I feel like it, it'll bring me good luck or something. Like, I try to, you know, pray or do something. But I, I always forget to do it because I'm <laughs> just, like, trying to memorize my, my match. Um, but... The weirdest one that I've seen recently, I guess it's not really weird, but I didn't know that smelling salts were still a thing. Like, I thought it was oh. like, you know, I thought it was something that people did back in the day. And I saw someone yeah. doing it recently and I was like, huh, okay. I, I would thought that was still a thing. Yeah. yeah. I thought that's like if you're like out and then they- yeah, That's if you're like out cold, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, wow. Okay. Well, there's, I won't say the name because I don't know if it's like, you know, going to backfire or whatever, but yeah, I saw yeah, this person, enough. I saw this person like doing smelling salts and I was like- Dang, that's 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 crazy. I never saw I never seen someone actually in person do that before. So who knows? Well, I just have to imagine is that like the same effect as like getting a shot of adrenaline or yeah, MD it's like or something. It like but, adrenaline but and opening your yeah. sinuses. Yeah. Wow. Maybe <laughs> I can. Oh. Maybe that'll be my new thing. I don't know. Open your nasal passage. Oh, there you go. Yeah, Jesus helps open, help your open your nasal patches to help okay. breathing. Well, okay, so I mean, I imagine, yeah, but also I'm sure it jazzes you up pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but there's nothing illegal in a smelling salt. I don't so, think like, so. smell yeah. yourselves, friends, do whatever smell you want. Yourself. Like, I used okay, this is like so outdated. And Jordan, you're a, quite a bit younger than Danica and I, but ha are you familiar with the high school musical? Yes, I am. Okay, so there's a, there's like this one part with like Sharpay and her brother, like before they perform, they're always like, -da 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 -da, and they're like, Mah. I feel like I really want someone to have that as their pre-show ritual. So everyone can be like, what the, fuck? <laughs> like, what is she doing? I I need to start doing that just for whatever, before I like announce yeah, before, a just match start or doing something. It anytime, like before you do the show, just start doing yeah. it. Yeah, I'm in, oh, okay. Challenge accepted. I will. <laughs> you have to record yourself doing it. <laughs> and I shall. <laughs> I will. Oh, okay. Oh, this one's fine. Okay. So outside of wrestling, what kind of fan fandoms like helped shape you growing up or help shape you become Jordan Grace? So, I mean, honestly, I've been wrestling since I was 14. So I feel like wrestling really did shape me like, I was a, I was, I never really found myself until I started wrestling. And then I feel like I was just in a community and I felt like this was, you know, what I was supposed to be doing. But, um, <laughs> like, uh, when I was growing up, I also did amateur wrestling. So like, like Olympic oh. style wrestling. So that was something that 
really like instilled some kind of discipline in me because that shit is hard. And I was the I was the only girl on a team with like all guys. And it's like, it's real, it's real. So I would wrestle these guys and they would legitimately just like kick my ass. So I feel like that definitely <laughs> made me tougher. And maybe that's why I like intergender wrestling so much nowadays. Fair you, enough. You and my sister would be best friends. <laughs> oh, really? How old are you guys? Older. <laughs> I'm, uh, wow, I don't think, I've, I don't know if people Have know her age. I don't think we've said this. It's fine. I'm 35. And I'm 34. So I'll be it's 35. It's probably. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know, like, Danik and I like were in music as well. And I remember when I was pursuing music about 10 years ago, you know, and I was 24, they're like, you are too old. Like I have these emails where somebody was like, you're way too old. You're 10 pounds overweight. Like you need to do this, do that. They're like, pretend that you're 18 or 19 years old. I'm like, I'm covered in tattoos. Like, oh, you started getting them when you were 15 or 16. And I'm like, this is disgusting. Not a good image. <laughs> Bye. Oh Yeah. yeah. Yeah, God, it's, you know, it exists that's, everywhere. That's toxic. Just, that's a toxic industry. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So I guess that's why I'm always like, do people know how old? Yeah. 34. There it is. You're not that much older than me. Woo. We got a good 10 years on you. Don't like 10 <laughs> years, Jordan. <Yeah. laughs> that's do okay. you even know who Lit is? No, <laughs> I don't. Do you, uh, <laughs> oh, no. Right. Boom, it's right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So uh, here's something that I'm very interested in because um, as someone who is very unmotivated, I need kind of help in this regard. But um, what helpful tips could you give to someone who wanted to pursue powerlifting? Oh, my God. I would say that you should probably find a coach because when you when you find a coach, normally they they coach some kind of team. So it's, it's a lot easier to get into powerlifting when you're with a team and you have a coach than doing it by yourself. Because at these meets, pretty much everybody has a group or a team. And uh, it's, it's very difficult to kind of get in your warm up because there's, you know, only a few barbells or benches or anything. And these teams kind of like a cost everything. So if you don't have like your coach is normally going to be the person who's like goes in and is like, okay, let her warm up now. But if you're like timid or soft spoken or by yourself, it, it can be really intimidating to grow up, go up to a group of people and be like, yeah, I need it. I need to warm up now. So mm -hmm. I feel like definitely find someone that can help you. And it's it's actually pretty easy on Instagram because you can just type in wherever you're at powerlifting and normally a bunch of things come up. Yeah, mm -hmm. There you go. That's good. That's good. So stuff. <laughs> do you have like an ultimate goal or like a next goal that you want to hit as far as powerlifting? I want to compete in a meet and for my, my overall lifts to be at least a thousand pounds. So that's like a big, that's like a big goal of mine. So that would, that would mean my, my, my deadlift would have to be at least 400. My squat had to be at least 400. And then my bench would have to be at least 200. So that's like my big goal is to do that. Wow. Hell yeah, girl. Yeah. Yeah, so you're on your I'm way. Just, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, dude, seriously. <laughs> wow, that's you're a... really not that far off. So yeah, it's I'm, it's I'm impressive. Not concerned that you'll get there. No, <laughs> I, I watch you do the squats, and like my knees hurt for me. <laughs> like I'm like I can't even bend down to because it's because I'm 34. I'm like I can't. Like, uh, <laughs> Wait till you're 35. <laughs> the, the deadlift is what kills me because that that gets my lower back like real bad That's, yeah i look at that and i just go well i would have snapped in half by now <laughs> like <laughs> i i try to train deadlift as little as possible just because like literally i'll be like laying on the floor as my back is just like hurting <laughs> <laughs> it all hurts it all hurts all right so we have after this. <laughs> I know. Uh, okay so we have a game that we're gonna play but uh let me ask you one um i guess final question um what would be your favorite day off activity Oh my God, just eating everything. Mm. Like, <laughs> I just, I like, I don't know why that's like my favorite activity is just to eat everything. I love Korean barbecue. I don't oh know if you guys. Bim and Bop, yo. Oh, so, if I can go to like have Korean barbecue and then maybe like get a pedicure and then go get frozen yogurt, like, that's my oh, idea. I'm there. 
<laughs> oh my God, call me. <laughs> hey, anytime you guys are in Atlanta, let's do it. I'm down. Yes. I'm only like 10 hours from there. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, what, eight, seven? Maybe I don't know. <laughs> no, traversing like Florida. Meet in the middle. Yeah. We can do it. We can do it. We'll get yeah. to it. Maybe yes, Shine, okay. maybe Shine will book me again and we'll get we'll, we can do it. Yeah. Jordan, maybe Shine will pick me again too. Wouldn't that be great? I, heard from them. I, don't think, I think they lost my number. They're like, we've had two Heathers. We're moving on to the next. Oh, okay. So before we go to the game, Jordan, um, Tony wants to know uh what has been your favorite intergender match that, um, that you were in? I had a match with Orange Cassidy a couple of years ago that I just loved. It was, it was like one of my favorite matches ever. <laughs> what an angel. He, oh. I love him. He's literally like my favorite wrestler. <laughs> he seems to be a lot of people's favorite wrestler. And because he's so unique and quirky and I'm, I'm so, uh, it's so good to see him get this huge push. He's so yeah. cool. He's just Hell so yeah. cool. He's figured out a way to work the system to where like, he is an amazing wrestler, but he mm -hmm. doesn't have to wrestle. <laughs> I know. He, can, he can just be cool. He can just be this cool dude. That's the dream. Amen. <laughs> right? Amen. All right. So we have a game that we're going to play. This is a game of Would You Rather. These are very random. We're warning you. They're all over the place. Um, if you want to elaborate on an answer, that's great. If not, we'll move right along. Okay. And there's no wrong Danica. answer. Yeah, there's no wrong answers here. We're just here to have fun. So Danica, I'll let you do the first one. Let's kick it so, out. All right. Would you rather arrive to a show on a yacht or arrive to a show via helicopter? A helicopter. Have you I ever wanna... been in one? No, I've never been in a helicopter, but I imagine just like me flying in a helicopter on the roof of a, of a fucking VFW hall. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Just like coming How in like a parachute or a parachute. And like, you're like, oh. People will be like, what is happening? <laughs> well, I love that. yeah. I love, yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Here's the next one. Would you rather? Okay, if you had to change your entrance theme song, <laughs> would you rather of these two options have it be a kids bop song or a show tune? Definitely kids bop because yeah. they just they just sing about anything, no matter if it's like sexual or perverted or dirty. They just they just change it completely. They just they switch it up. I don't know how they do it, but they, they do. They yeah, there's like, there, there's like a Bruno Mars song. I forget what it was, and they made it about smoothies, and I'm like. Songs not about smoothies, but like now I kind of want a smoothie. So they did a good job. But yeah, they're they're very creative. Yeah. Didn't they do that uh Nicki Minaj WAP song? They made it about food. Did they really oh my god, I gotta find this. First oh, of all, shit. no. <laughs> Look it up. Look Absolutely it up. not. No, you don't do that. Oh my god. You don't do that. That's a, such a big sh I can't even like okay. <laughs> That's a stretch. Nope. That nope. Was a stretch. It was pretty oh. fire though, like honestly. <laughs> All right, it's just the entire song, just the macaroni and a part. Yeah, macaroni and a pot. <laughs> there you go. Macaroni, mac. I love macaroni. It's so terrifying. All right, here's the next one, Danica. Oh God, okay. Would you rather have to live next door to a frat house or have to live next door to a punk bar? Dang, both these suck. <laughs> they do because punk because punk bars are loud and then frat houses are also loud. Oh, dang it. There's no wrong answers. I mean, listen, you have a helicopter. I'm sure you can, you know, make them scurry. I think maybe live next to a punk bar because then maybe I could like, like dress up as something and then go in there and just like act like I'm super cool. Just like I will say uh, of, of the experiences I've had, I would absolutely rather live next to a punk bar, mostly because I've been in a lot of them. And yeah, most punk fans and like punk rockers are way cooler than frat guys. Oh, and are way more respectful. Yeah, I believe that. way and less. Yes, I am. I am absolutely generalizing, and I have no problem with this in this regard. <laughs> All right, Woo! punk rock for sure. Punk rock. All right, here's the next one. Would you rather compete? In a TNA Classic Full Metal Mayhem match or in a TNA Classic King of the Mountain match? King of the Mountain, because I really want to win a King of the Mountain match. That would be so freaking cool. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. 100%. And yes. also, I don't like, I mean, 
I don't want I don't want to have that many weapons involved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've never taken a chair shot, and I don't want to ever in my life. Uh, yeah. I remember like the, the closest I ever got to like any type of like in ring thing, like when it was actually at a shine and Sue Young had a uh, kendo stick and it went flying and like almost hit me. And I was like, I can't do this. Like, and I'm not, I, <laughs> yeah, like, I'm not born to be a wrestler. So I'm <laughs> like, we're good here. All right. Uh, here's the next one. All right. Would you rather always have to dress in 1980s fashion or always have to dress in 1990s fashion? 90s for sure, because that shit looks so comfortable. And I think my... It was. I feel like I would, I would, I feel like I would constantly have a yeast infection if I always dressed in 90s attire. Like... We'll have to ask people that are the generation right above us, but um, I can I'll call Jane Fonda fact. real quick. <laughs> yeah. Let me get her on the phone. But yeah. for a fact, the dude, hammer pants all the way. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Zubas. Yeah, Zubas. I was going to say, like, yeah. for sure, Zubas all the time. Here, here's the, those. Yeah. The, the problem is, though, like, outside of the fashion, as long as I can keep my current day eyebrows, which thank God, like I finally got it right, I cannot do '90s brows. <laughs> that was just not okay. Yeah, just the like, one single line. Yeah, that I was gonna say it's the pencil thin ones, right? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> hard one, pass. Single, single hard pass. I got a sharpie hair. right here. Let's just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Let's do this. <laughs> oh, but also uh, remember, '90s fashion also includes. Things like baby doll dresses. I'm good with it. Um, I'm okay with that too. And those, uh, I don't even know how to describe this material, but it was like the squishy material. I mean, Parachute. it also includes like, uh, no, no, no. Um, the ones that, well, unfortunately they came back. It looked style. like an accordion. Like an accordion, yes. Yeah, the accordion um, shirts. It was like tank tops, but, or like tube tops. But like yeah. accordion. Yeah, Danica, um, we wore them. Stop. We absolutely did. And it was the worst choice. <laughs> we also thought we were the Spice Girls. So we did. Anyway, we did. okay, here's the next one. <laughs> Would you rather have telekinetic powers or telepathic powers? Mm -hmm. Man, they're both so good. Dang it. Uh, I think telepathic powers. I feel like mm -hmm. I could do anything in the world. If I had, I feel like telekinetic powers, like people would, uh, they would try to do experiments on you and stuff if they found out, mm -hmm. but you would never have to tell anybody about the telepathic powers. <laughs> you could just be like sneaky as fuck and just like, you know, work your way to the top. Mm -hmm. I, I think like that's that. what Trump had. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> next he one. He had something. Okay, next one. <laughs> All right. Would you rather power lift train with Mark Henry for a day or do an endurance training with Cesaro for a day? Listen, I love Cesaro, but I have to go with powerlifting. Like he's the world's strongest man. It's Mark Henry. It's freaking Mark Henry, dude. We love him. <laughs> yeah. He could bench press a freaking truck. <laughs> I, I don't doubt it for a second. Yeah, he's superhuman. Like, I, if, if superheroes exist, it's Mark Henry, you know? Like, I need some uh, tips for sure from him. Oh, love him so much. All right. I love uh, this game. Oh, good. We're so glad. <laughs> I think we have a couple more, maybe one more. Do we? Or was that the last? Oh, okay. Okay. This one's a little weird. Apologies. Would you rather do a Freaky Friday swap with your favorite wrestler growing up or a Freaky Friday swap with your childhood crush? Oh man, definitely my childhood crush because it was Justin Bieber, and I feel like that would be a, that would be really cool. He was, doing, he was doing some crazy stuff for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, that was <laughs> very interesting. <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay, Justin, the Biebs it is. We love you, Biebs. All right, and maybe one more. Oh yeah. Yes. All right. Would you rather wrestle Tommy Dreamer in an Extreme Rules match? or wrestle Ken Shamrock in a submission match. Dude, you know what's so funny? I was just telling Tommy that I was going to wrestle him one day, and so I have to pick him. <laughs> Full circle. He was, ta yeah. he was telling me how he doesn't want to take my finisher ever, and I was like, no, we're, you're going to take it one day because we're going to wrestle. <laughs> uh, yeah, and now it is said out loud. It shall be ripped, <laughs> and there we go. On top of the trash can. We're going to do it. Uh, there you go. Love it. <laughs> that was the game. Yay! That was, that was awesome. Oh, good. Well, since we've like come to the end of the stream, is there any final thoughts that you want to leave us with? Um, this is the best podcast I've ever done, first of all. 
Thank you. Very, oh, it's very, very Thank interactive. You. The it was the fastest forty five minutes has ever gone by ever in a podcast. So kudos to you ladies. This Thank is you. very this is very professional. This is very awesome. So <laughs> thank you. I'm taking that clip and replaying it like every night before I go to sleep now. I'm gonna be like, Jordan Grace is the best. Wow. I've done some really bad podcasts, but this is this is definitely the best one. We all have. And I think that we've we've learned from it. And you know, we've and, and I think I, like not to toot our own horn, but you know, Danica and I have been best friends since we were like what four or five years old. So like we get it and like yeah. Y'all have good chemistry. Thank you. Also, it's because of the spice girls. Jokers? Yeah, so she yeah. and I are wearing um, our best, best friend. 1990s style oh, chokers. Oh, they yeah. are magnetized together. They're also mood ring style. So they change their minds on backwards. Oh, man. I wish I could get my best friend to wear a choker. We were definitely 90s kids. <laughs> you, you just make them do it. You say, here you go. Put this on. <laughs> you just buy them, them and melt them into wearing it. That's how it works for all friends. <laughs> yeah, I guilted her. Um, <laughs> Before we wrap it up, Danica, do you want to go over our upcoming list of guests that we have? All right. This coming Tuesday, we have Mr. Lucas Rossi. The lead singer from Rockstar Supernova. We love him. On Thursday the 28th, we have Mr. Josh Peterstorff is joining us again. From uh, He's the voice of Roadhog from Overwatch. I'm not going to do an impression. I almost tried. We're not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and for another special Friday episode, we have Mr. Glenn Sobel is rejoining us again. The drummer for Alice Cooper, Hollywood Vampires. We also have Casey Jost coming up from Impractical Jokers, Edward Furlong, Terminator 2, Cora Taylor, singer Slipknot. And then, oh, of course, I also want to mention Chris Hansen is coming back. Back and we're going to talk all things to catch a predator and I can't freaking wait. We love him. I so. just saw Chris Hansen's name and I was like, what? Yeah. Uh, he is amazing. We, before and he is delightful. Yeah. That's so freaking cool. I'm so I, jealous. Uh, well, Jordan, we'll, we'll, we would love to have you back again as well. Okay. Awesome. I will definitely come back anytime. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And uh, thank you guys for joining us here on our special Friday night. We will see you guys on Tuesday. Au revoir, everybody. Goodbye.